We live our life through a daily series of sliding door moments. Choices that seem inconsequential and yet, done enough times, they carve the trajectory of our future. Choices made from hoping and wishing versus deciding and committing. Choices made to avoid emotional discomfort versus honouring the truth of who and what we are. In this episode, I'm illustrating the life-changing power of better choices versus perfect choices. Why it might have been really hard for you to believe this up until now, and the five areas to assess that you know exactly where your biggest shift is available. So if you're ready, let's dive right in. Welcome back, and I am super excited by this episode because choices change lives. Your choice changes your life. And I want to help you today to learn how to make better, more powerful choices that don't seem completely overwhelming. Now, Pythagoras said that choices are the hinges of destiny, and it feeds into that sliding door analogy that every decision we make is a, another hinge opening or closing another door, opening or closing it on options, opportunities and outcomes. So the first question is, why might, have been, why might it have been so hard for you to make these powerful decisions for yourself in the past? Well, you may never even have thought about this kind of like sliding door analogy, in which case you could already have had a potentially life-changing realisation. But if you have known that and you've still struggled with decision making, I want to share the three common reasons that I see for this. The first one is telling yourself that you're making a forever decision versus a for now decision. Running it through this model that, well, this has to be the answer. This has to work. Getting yourself caught up in linear and logical thinking where you see it as I do this, I expect this to happen. You make the decision responsible for the results that you create versus you being responsible for working the decision to guarantee the results that you want. When we choose to make a decision a forever decision, we create this sense of inflexibility, not just in our brain, but in how we show up for that decision, because we're putting all of the emphasis, all of the power inside of that particular decision. And when we have that inflexibility, we're also creating an external responsibility, making something else responsible for the results that we're creating. When we can let that go and we can say this is a for now decision, just notice the instant freedom that gets created in your body. This is a for now decision. I can work this decision for a week or for a month or for three months. Nothing, very rarely are there any decisions that are no going back decisions. Most decisions that we make, we can backtrack if we decide. So when we make a for now decision, what it does is it creates this space in our brain and body of safety, which we always want to create for ourselves. It allows us to be more flexible in our approach so we can still be going towards the same goal, but we become more flexible in how we approach it. And it just gives us more options to open and close different doors if we need to. So that's the first one, making them forever versus for now. The second reason that I see for people not making the decisions is that decisions are being based from a place of fear, desperation, a sense of hopelessness or wishful thinking. Nelson Mandela had a great quote that said, may your choices reflect your hopes and not your fears. And whilst I would never just get somebody to make a decision on a hope and a prayer, if it was a choice between making a decision out of hope or fear, I'm leaning into hope. And what's happening here is when we're acting from fear, as an example, the decisions that you're making are being filtered through the constructs of your brain. And what I mean by that is a construct is a, you know, a conditioned belief, a perceived limitation, a, a belief that has been given to you, installed in you without your conscious uh, awareness or permission. And filters are not the truth. I want to share with you um, an awareness or a message that I received yesterday when I was meditating. And it was exactly that. When you feel the stretch of uncomfortableness, when things don't feel good, when you are having all the head drama, it's because you are experiencing a construct. And the picture that they gave me with that, well, they, there was two pictures. The first picture was 
of like high rise apartments, like office blocks, whatever, residential doesn't matter. But just this this city of high rise blocks and every high rise block was a construct that was in my brain that was not true. It was just because I've had it for 48 years and because decisions that I've made in the past just keep putting another level on the building and another level and another level and another level, it's hard to see above them, right? Because you're surrounded by them and your decisions are being made from this city that your brain is living in. And then the weirdly, the, the solution they gave me was to imagine myself on a Cluedo board. So if you've ever played Cluedo, you know, you know, you've got the dining room and you've got the kitchen and you've got the whatever, all the different rooms. And every room has at least one, maybe two exits out into a corridor that you can then walk down to go into a different room. And so the solution they gave me was recognizing when you're in the construct, when you're feeling the discomfort, that it's probably an untruth that you're living through. And that I could choose to walk out of that room on the Cluedo board and start to walk down a corridor towards another room of my making, of my choosing. So when we make these decisions from fear and desperation and all of those things, it's likely because you're making decisions from who you've been told that you are and what is possible for you and what's attainable for you versus the truth of who you are. The third and final thing is really the three pains that we spoke about last week on last week's podcast. The three pains that we all try to avoid as human beings, some of us more so than others. And it's that loss pain, it's the process pain, and it's the outcome pain. And when we're making decisions where we can try and avoid the emotional discomfort associated with all of those things, we're not going to make the best choices for ourselves. We're going to go into avoidance. We're going to go into trying to keep ourselves like perceived sense of safety. We're going to go into the same decisions we've made over and over again. So I hope you can see from what I've just shared there that the first choice, the first decision for you to make that will create the biggest sliding door moment of all of this is who are you going to choose to be every day? What are you going to decide is true for you? How are you going to choose to view the world? Marianne Williamson said, every decision you make reflects your evaluation of who you are. You see, you will make different and better choices when you choose to believe you are capable, worthy, deserving, resilient and resourceful in creating any and every outcome you desire in and for your life. You have to make better choices from that place. It's kind of like the law. There is, and the reason you haven't done this before is because there is such a strong lean into evaluating the options and possible outcomes. But who has ever told you to evaluate you in your decision-making process? What if... Your current truth is that you are not getting results that you want because the decisions that you keep making around it are made on a false evaluation of yourself. What if you would make a different decision if you amplified, elevated or shifted how you feel about you, how you look at yourself, how you, who you decide that you are? That could be true, right? And I want to show you that emotion with an example from myself. So in July, I asked myself, what am I willing to do to get my business to the next level? And immediately health came to my to my mind. It was it was strong. It was there. And when I sat with that, before I made the decision, I looked at the decisions and the choices I'd I'd been making in the past. And I could 100 percent see how I was acting inside my comfort zone. So yes, whilst I worked out most days of the week, it was with no actual plan. Now, that didn't mean that the workout wasn't beneficial. Of course it was. But it did keep me getting the same results over and over again. So I committed to a 65 workout, 12-week plan. And guess what? With just about, I don't know, eight workouts to go, I'm getting results. I also had this story, this construct that I'm a, a work hard, play hard kind of gal. And so at the weekend, that meant wine, entertaining, you know, more food, etc. So it really sabotaged my workout results. 
So I decided in August then to go alcohol free for a month and I have not gone back to how I was before. And what's really interesting is that I'm getting results, not just in my body, but so much in my mind and in my business. And I'm also amplifying the results that I'm getting from my workouts. Now, it also turned out that before I made these other two decisions, that the workouts and the eating that I've been doing for a decade, um, and I do eat very well and have done for a long time now, they weren't really working for me. And I guessed it was my age. We've all seen all the stuff on social media about perimenopause, right? So I had, I thought, okay, I need to address that as well. I'd already looked at the workouts and decided on a program for the workouts, but I wanted to know what else. Because if the workouts weren't getting me the results that I wanted, which they weren't at the time in the first four to five weeks, what else was I missing? What else could I try? What else was I willing to lean into? And as serendipity would have it, something popped up on my social media feed from uh, Dr. Mindy, I don't know how you pronounce her name, Pels, P-E-L-Z, about a 72-hour water fast challenge that she was doing. And I was like, you know what? I'm all in. I'm all in for leaning into the hard stuff, but I want to find out what this means for my body. And I did the water fast and I bought her book and I read a book and then I lent into just trying the 30 day challenge, which I'm halfway through now, which is just different variations of intermittent fasting. And guess what? I'm making better choices most of the time. And guess what? I'm getting results. So in July, in three months, I'm getting a hundred times better results than I did in say even the two to three years prior to that because I chose to lean in to a different version of myself I made slightly harder choices and I made the commitment and it all started with that one better decision start and commit to the 65 workout program no matter what and that meant if I couldn't work out till five o'clock in the afternoon which is not my magic time I would work out at five o'clock in the afternoon if it meant that I had to get up earlier, I was getting up earlier. Like I didn't skip a workout. Five days a week, one better decision, snowballed. One day without alcohol became 32 days. And now it's just a couple of glasses on a weekend. Deciding to investigate intermittent fasting for my health led to a three-day water fast, which taught me so much about myself. And then it got me curious about what's actually happening inside my body. And that led me to leaning into this 30-day program, which I'm now halfway through. And so it brings me to one of the quotes that literally changed my life from the book, The Slight Edge, which I talk about a lot, which is, it is the small, seemingly inconsequential daily acts that make the biggest difference. And I guess before that, you could say it is the small, seemingly inconsequential choices that we make day in, day out that create the huge sliding door moments for the rest of our life. And the big thing with me is making those decisions changed some self-sabotaging stories that I had. It showed me how I good could show up. It showed me how I could do harder things and most importantly, feel good about doing them. Your life changes the moment you make a new congruent and committed decision that's from Tony Robbins and that is so important because it's not just the new decision it's being congruent with the person that you want and know deep down you are rather than the person you currently are the person you've been told that you have been up until now or what conditioning tells you congruent means being congruent with who you know you truly are and what you're truly capable on a deep level and the committed decision isn't a when it's convenient, when it feels good, when I feel in alignment, when I've got the time. Committed decision is no matter what. And you carve your, what I call a hammock of habits around that decision so that you can show up no matter what. So decision number two really comes from where are your better decisions? Where can you make a couple of different choices now that are going to give you most bang for your buck and give you that snowball effect? And I'm going to guide you to that in the AHA to action session in a sesh, in, in a sesh, in a sec. And decision number three. Decision number three is based on the reasons why you've avoided decisions before. 
right? The potential perceived emotional discomfort. I've got another quote for you. Every decision brings with it some good, some bad, some lessons and some luck. The only thing that's for sure is that indecision steals many years from many people who wind up wishing that they just had the courage to leap. So I've got three tips for you that are going to help you lean in to this discomfort, lean more into the hard. And the first one is curiosity over courage. And simply for me in my brain, when I think about coaching my clients around courage, oftentimes, obviously, there's a focus on why it's so hard why does this thing require so much courage from you and when we're in that space just notice how we are sending ourselves into the future and making assumptions about how it's going to feel how it's going to turn out what we're going to experience whilst we're doing it and we can catastrophize that we can exacerbate old traumas and experiences that we've had and don't get me wrong I think courage is a massive uh, a massive topic but when we get in there, sometimes we overly focus on why we need to be courageous, which means we're overly focused on what we're expecting to happen. Now, when we lean into curiosity, we can start thinking more about being open to any outcome, not judge, prejudging the results because every result is just a, a lesson, like I've just said in that previous quote. Curiosity lets us just soften ourselves into the process and it really anchors us into the process versus the outcome, which leads me to second, the second point. Please focus on the journey and who you are becoming because this is where the change happens. Lots of people can do um, you know, a quick fix. Lots of people can commit to something for a week, maybe even a month. But the person that works on themselves will be the th will be the person that commits to something for life if it does them good, if it's for their highest good. So focus on the journey, focus on the step by steps, focus on those little things every day. That will make it easier for you. And lastly, reframe what's hard. When did you learn that this emotion was good and that emotion was bad? And what if hard was actually okay? Or maybe better than okay, what if it hard was good? What if hard was just a thought? How else could you think differently about it? So reframe what your brain is telling you is hard. Now, before I sum it up in just some steps, I wrote this down before I started this podcast today. Start with making better choices. Then start making better choices more of the time. And eventually, you'll make the best choices most of the time. Doesn't that feel really good that you can just start by making some better choices? So let's sum it up. Your life is a series of sliding door moments and you get to exist in your life as a conditioned response or you get to experience your life as a creation of your consciousness and your choices. The big stuff is the small stuff. Making better choices is a powerful route to changing your life. Evaluate yourself as you make your decisions and developing yourself is the real work always. So I know it's a little bit of a longer session, but there is so much in there. And it's so important because if I can't find a way to help you make better choices, I can't help you change your life. So we could do a whole series on this, but let's lean into the aha to action ASAP. You've probably, I hope, heard the quote that the quality of your life is determined by the quality of your questions. And we touched on that a little bit earlier with the self-evaluation, but I want to go a little bit deeper right now. As part of the Build Your Business Six Pack Framework, we uh, do high performance coaching together. And there are five elements. So when we look at focus and clarity, which are some of the first things we work on, we start by looking at five key areas. Clarity, energy, courage, productivity, and influence. Now, there are two parts to this implementation. The first one is optional. And all I want you to do is rate yourself one to 10, one being poor not so good and 10 being you know the best rate yourself one to ten in those five areas of clarity energy courage productivity and influence and please make a note of how you're defining each of those things because we all have different definitions of that the second part of this is the actual homework and if you do them both you'll get a better response 100 percent. i've got five questions for you there's one from each session let your answer 
show you where you need to invest in better daily choices and ask your brain, how does this look? What specifically does this look like? And if it looks like what, is, what you've always done, then you need to ask again. So here are your five questions. And I will make sure that I put these in the show notes as well. So you don't have to uh, re keep re-listening. So clarity. What areas of life am I lacking clarity in and why? Energy. Do I have the physical vibrancy and stamina to accomplish my goals and feel energized about my life every day? Courage. Where am I backing down in my life right now? Productivity. Where am I being sucked into distraction? And finally, influence. What areas of my life am I lacking the influence that I need to accomplish my goals? I know this has been a bit of a hefty episode. Like I said, there's a lot in there. Go back, re-listen, unpack it, make some notes. Take this as the most powerful coaching you have had up until now. And I very much look forward to speaking to you again in the next episode of the Build Your Business Six Pack podcast. <laughs>